Honda. When you think of this name, you can't help but think of their iconic Goldwing. First introduced in 1974 as the GL1000, standing for Gold Line, this iconic bike grew into the Goldwing of today. Six cylinders, 1800 cc's, and luxury on wheels. And now, images have surfaced online of what could be the new wing since 2001. We're waiting to see if this will be a new dawn for Honda. Hi guys, this is the first image that caught my attention about a month ago. It is a patent for a new front end, which is kind of like landing gear on the Honda. You can see the frame is completely new, the bars have changed, and this first surfaced about a month ago. But what's really cool is the next picture I found. It's the front end shot. And yes, that's a power windshield. And here's a shot of the dash. Now we're gonna come back to this, but it's just all new, all electronic, all LCD. It's fantastic. The next shot that I found was of this front end, very unique with the bodywork off. This is also important because it's so high tech. It has control arms that I believe have actuators that might be what's called a stick shaker that will pull you back onto the lane if you start to depart. What's interesting about a stick shaker is that it must be able to see forward and see the lane, very similar to what Honda has in their cars called Honda Sensing. It actually sees the road. And here's a shot of the dash, which is quite interesting. You've got your standard seat heat on a rocker switch and your grip heat on a rocker switch as well. The center buttons are for headset or speakers. So it will probably be Bluetooth more than likely because I cannot find a plug-in anywhere. The center joystick has an enter button as well. And there's a home button to your left, which will be for the map system to get you back to the initial page. The top button where the key usually goes has an on off and accessory knob, but I'm believing that's a sensor. This will be keyless access. You just walk up to your bike, it knows you, and you get on and you ride. Now here on the right side is the interesting thing. We've got our cruise control in the lower right corner there for resume and excel and set, on off in the center, forwards to the left, but the switch above is what's interesting. That's D, S, or sport and drive. This thing is DCT. It looks like it's going to be an automatic, but will it be a five speed or a six? This is what's going to be interesting. I wonder if they have enough room to add a six gear. So on the left side here, this is interesting controls as well. We've got quite the update on electronics. That little dash on the lower left, that's your downshift button for your manual switches when you're in DCT mode. Africa twin riders will notice that there's a, probably going to be a plus on the front. Um, center is going to be for controls of the map, I'm guessing. We've got circular and enter. Very top, right, there's your happy button for everybody. The power windshield up and down. To the left, there's something. It looks it's a rocker switch for something. I'm not sure what that's going to be because it's not identified, but we'll see. But the left below that, check that out. That is a phone symbol, folks. This thing is going to be able to make and receive phone calls and I wonder if it was going to Bluetooth to your phone with Apple Pay or Android Play. It'll be interesting to see. That is for sure. Um, other things, we've got that top right button above the circle there. That's what I'm wondering if is it the lane capture button. That's the same symbol that's on my car. That means it's captured the lane. It can actually see the road. The right bottom button it might be a back button or we'll see but the lower left I can't quite make that out but I wonder if that's a, some sort of an automatic braking switch because if it has the ability to drive it'll have the ability to stop on the bottom you're gonna see um, the wing symbol with A and B I think at the bottom it'll be interesting whether that's your ride height adjustment now or if that is your um, automatic braking we'll see of course, the most hidden button there is your signals for left and right. They will definitely be self-canceling. 
The next interesting shot about back uh, being here at the dashboard is the little vents on the very top underneath the windshield. What those are and other pictures I've seen, that is some sort of a pop-up that comes up and I believe that is going to be the forward-looking radar for capturing the lanes or distance and automatic braking. But I'll show you the shot where it is up in the other image and you can actually see that it is a radar of some sort. Um, we're going to have LED, of course, as you can see, all the information, gas, brake, you know, neutral, all that stuff indicated. There's also a touring mode showing here on the dash, which is wonderful. With the DCT, you'll be able to set your engine up for gas performance, maybe performance, sport, hill climbing, whatever. We'll see what it is. And there's a picture of a guy sitting. So I'm wondering if that's going to be an image for ride height, um, to adjust your ride height there. Obviously, we're in the radio screen here and you'll be able to flip through, you know, see the map and project and everything there. Um, I hope it is adjustable. It probably will be for size of font. A lot of the Goldwing riders are older and they're gonna wanna be able to see that big font. But definitely a whole new dash, definitely lower down. You can see that the speakers are now below that. I wonder if that's gonna affect the sound reflecting off the handlebars. Of course, I can't see. It just could be the angle of the photograph. But you'll notice the bars come down and in. And this is where it's going to connect to a central head, which is that hub that I showed you earlier, and that front end. The actuator arms for controlling that stick shaker or lane guidance will be underneath this. Um, just a ton of tech is going into this bike. And then you can see on the right here, the overall shot of the top down. It has slimmed. It's going to be a lot smaller. I think they put this bike in a dryer. Um, Another person noticed that it may have power mirrors that fold in that would bring it in closer to being the bags being the widest point. And I want to get an outside shot in a second here and I'll show you the new bag shape because they actually went back a little bit to the iconic, I don't know, 85, 89 bag shape. So this shot, again, the first one of the outside where we see the bike in whole, um, a completely new change, looks thinner, motor slightly forward, a little bit higher up, whole new front end, whole new color, and you can see that little tiny radar thing popped up just under the power windshield there on his dash. There's the shape of the new bags too, and I'll show you this other shot in a second. But uh, don't worry, it's not yellow pinstriped. That's just the reflection of the uh, center line on the bikes. Uh, this was probably taken in Europe somewhere, or maybe the US. Um, but notice how small the bike looks, uh, like it's been through a dryer. We will have to see when it gets here, but I don't think that guy's at least six foot tall, but we'll see. And here we are in the final outside look. Uh, this looks like a nice royal blue with classic uh, pinstriping, uh, which they've gone back to, which they haven't had in a while, but it's emphasizing the new shape. You can see that we've now got radial brakes. Uh, they're going to be chrome covered. The wheels have changed. They've gone to more of a CTX 1300 type wheel with that suspension in there. The motor's definitely been moved forward, so I'm thinking that they have put a sixth gear in it. And the new frame, you can see, curves up and over and underneath. So that's interesting. Also, the tip over bars appear to be missing, but they're actually not. Right below the Honda engine name there, that little black bump, that's a bent loop that's upwards and it's covered in a piece of plastic. The rear bag, protector is that black section that looks like a foot peg but it's actually sticking out. The passenger pegs are folded up at this moment. Um, you'll notice too it appears to have a single-sided swing arm as always so it'll be shaft driven and the exhaust nicely triangulated away from the old curved look. Here's what's kind of cool. This one as you can see appears to have a clutch lever so I'm wondering if they're going to be offering two versions of the bike DCT and not. You'll also see that the backrest comes with the driver's position. So it's going to have a backrest for the driver. I don't know how that's going to fold away or whether it removes or what. But the seat is looking very F6B-ish uh, like their other bike. Um, the armrests are very pointy and larger. Um, that must have the speakers hidden because I don't see anything. But the backrest for the rear passenger is quite taller as you can see. I'm thinking that the bag on the top has gone to a split hatch now, like a true trunk, rather than halfway down because the fold line is up near the armrest there. 
but check out that rear device. There's a little weird thing. Now, I don't know whether that's a camera for backing up and it can look straight down, or it's a rear view camera that can also project to the dashboard or a rear radar of some sort. But uh, we'll have to see. This is looking very high tech and very interesting. So total new design, total redesign, rethink of the whole bike. And I like what I'm seeing so far. The tech is going to be very interesting. Of course, we are going to find out totally on October 27th when the Japanese Motor Show happens. And it will be probably on display there with all the goodies listed. Oh, and one more thing. The F6B is back too, and it looks gorgeous. Thanks for watching, and I'll keep you posted on anything else I find and do updates regularly here. So don't forget to like and subscribe. That way you can keep up to date on all the Honda news and motorcycle news that's out there. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you soon.